Uh, hello, welcome to a 3ds Max tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about materials, uh, just basic materials really. So let's get started with that. Open up 3ds Max and your first step should be to create an object. For the purpose of this, we're going to create a sphere and a box. If you don't know how to create a sphere or a box, you need to watch some of my earlier tutorials or someone else's tutorials. Uh, handy hotkey tip, M is the hotkey for bringing up the material editor. You can also click on this button right here. With this open, you have six visible. You also have a lot more if you scroll down this wheel. We only need the first two for now. What this is, is basically an image or a picture that is going to be wrapped around a three-dimensional object to become its skin, if it were. A texture is like uh, what a desk looks like. I mean, three different desks could be exactly the same in proportion, but what sets them apart is what, what it looks like. Um, one, desk, one desk could have a wood finish, one desk could be blue, and one desk maybe has a metallic finish. And that's really what textures are in a 3D environment. It's differentiating items uh, not by model, but by visual texture. So to prove this, we can see that this circle is reddish and this one is purplish. So if we click on diffuse, which is just like, we click here on diffuse, sorry. It's just like basic change the color. Let's make it green and green all the way up. Now click on your circle and see that we have it selected. Make sure you have selected this and click on this. This is assign material to selection. Click on that and now this material is on here. We've got this kind of fluorescent green going on. Now we could also click on this and instead of clicking here, drag this onto it. So you can do the assign or you can do the drag and drop. Either way, if we make a change to this, we can see that the objects change as well because they're assigned. So let's make them a nice orangish color, terracotta going on. And let's make a second material. This time, instead of assigning a basic color, let's assign a pattern, a checker pattern. This is the, when you click on this little box, you're opened up with a bunch of different things. And these are just the basic types. A bitmap is basically an image. So if you take a picture of something or you want a picture to be your texture, double click on bitmap and navigate to where you have that picture file. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna be learning about the other basic ones. Cellular is good for making a splashy pattern. So is speckle. And so is uh, stucco and splat. But for right now, we're gonna do checker. Double click on it, and you can see that our material turns black and white. What happens if we drag and drop this onto our box? It turns gray. What does it turn gray? When we assign this to the circle and box, it turned the right color, but this time it's turned gray. What this is, is to save performance power. And if you're running on a low power computer, or you have a massive project you're working on, you may want to turn off all of the textures because that really is a huge amount of your rendering process. But since we only have two shapes, we can go ahead and turn them on. And keep in mind that a full render will actually bear much higher quality, while this, even if we turn the texture on, is just a reference. So click on this box that looks like a cow. Don't ask me why it looks like a cow, it just does. And we can now see that this box is indeed representing what we have assigned to it by our material. Now, if we go ahead and change this to maybe be blue and uh, goldish, looks like Sonic Special Stage, pretty crazy. And what we can do now is that because it's a checker, 
can see that it's got checker here. And if we want to go up to the first level, we can. We can go back here and assign it to diffuse. What's the point of assigning it to diffuse, you ask? Well, if I assign it a green diffuse and turn off the preview of the um, checker, we can see that it turns the right the color of our diffuse. That's why I turned gray before. But that doesn't really matter because we are going to be looking at it. But in the checker panel, just like with every other one of these things, the swirl, thin wood, gradient, fall off, everything, there's uh, specialized properties. And I encourage you to go through and just make a texture of each one of those and get comfortable with what special properties these have. Especially get comfortable with tiling, because when we click on tiling and increase it, we get more per each tile. As we can see over on the right, we have a much bigger now than we did before. Alternatively, if we went 0.4, we would have much bigger squares, even if we went 0.1. Or lower. Especially zero. Soften. Don't really need to play around with that. Blur offset, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Not super important. And angle is another thing you should play around with. What that does is actually, if you can see on the ball we have up here, if you double click on it, we can see this. And when we go to rotate it, it's rotating around look it's coming up over the horizon and that's actually spinning our texture around on an imaginary three-dimensional three object and putting it on so what started off as a simple checker just by rotating it turns into this really interesting texture I encourage you to toy around with textures toy around with uh, cellular checker combustion composite dent fall off flat mirror all of these basic ones and just get really comfortable with them Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope you uh, learned something about textures. Thanks.